everyone, and today what I'm going to be doing, not a mukbang, but let me know how you like this camera angle in the comments section. Um, I wrote a scary story last night, then everything that I read, or not, I wrote a scary story last night on my phone, and everything that I heard from that point on uh, was creeping me out because you know when you read these things or especially when you write them you get in this like mindset of like Everything's creepy. Everything's you know horrible The reason I have my iPod there, which is what I film on is because I Have a table here, but like there's crap on the table and not only that not literal crap But if I sit it there, it'll be like low and looking up and I don't like that I would like to be looking straight forward by the way, I don't know if you've ever heard of, and this has garbage in it, I apologize, um, if you've ever heard of Seagram's Gym Making Me Happy, but I had about three of these last night during the Super Bowl, and the Eagles won their first Super Bowl, and I'm so proud of them, and I'm so happy for all of them, because like, and you don't have to believe what I believe, but the whole game, I kept praying. I was like, God bless the Eagles. And then we won. And they earned that. You know, like, last year's Super Bowl was, like, one, it, it seemed really rigged. If you watched last year's Super Bowl, you know that there was, the one team had all of the points for, like, half the game. And then all of a sudden the other team just happens to, like, win. You know? This game was, like, close. It was, like, oh, they get a lead, then they catch up a little bit, then they get another lead, then they catch up, and then they would have a lead, and then they would... You know, it was like back and forth. And that's what healthy competition is. Both teams did really well. And, you know, the Eagles won in such a way that no one can say, oh, it was handed to them. You know what I mean? Like, there was this one announcer that every time they got a touchdown, he sat there and went, oh, well, I don't think that should have been a touchdown. So I have a feeling he was a Patriots supporter. But nonetheless, in my opinion, there should they should either have someone that's a supporter of one team and someone that's a supporter of the other team commentating or they should both be impartial um so you know but anyway after the super bowl was done after i had had my pizza and my cake which i posted on facebook but i didn't post on my fan page so i'll post a picture of the cake and what i was drinking and so you guys will be able to see that better i don't know what i'm gonna do that i'm gonna try and do that the same day i post this video um which will probably be like a tonight hopefully but anyway, which there will be this video and then a mukbang that I filmed a couple days earlier um, of me eating a and w poutine, which if I post this one first, that video will be linked in this one. If I post this one, um, I'll probably, like if I post that one first, I'll probably link this one and that one, but either way, you guys will probably watch both. Um, but anyway, this is mainly about the scary story. So, I swear, if my mom pulls in and comes up here and says, I love my mom, don't get me wrong, but I like to do my videos when I'm alone in the house, and my mom has off today, but she left, so I was hoping I would have time to do this, plus I'm sort of in the process of cleaning my room. My room is a mess, basically, and it's because I get to the point where like it's a certain amount of messiness, and I'm like, okay, I can't take it anymore. Then I'll clean it up, and then stuff will start to pile up, and I'm like, eh, I can tolerate this. But I won't let it get as bad as last time anymore. What always happens, it gets as bad as last time. Anyway, this, this is a really interesting, scary story. I remember it like it was yesterday. My friends and I were going to explore our local abandoned buildings. We weren't usually bally or motivated enough. We were usually content to sit and watch horror movies and read stories. However, that day, we chugged a few amps, or energy drinks, and felt extra hyper. We grabbed our brightest flashlights and put on our darkest clothes, and waited until about 6 p.m., and told our parents we were taking a walk. We went about two blocks when we saw it. The old Castor building. It was pretty much as broken as a building could be. It was called that because it used to be lived in by the Castor family. Then, supposedly one night, the mother snapped. She found out her husband was cheating. She vowed to end his happiness. She waited till he was at work and their two children were at school. She then kidnapped his mistress and tortured her in the basement. She gagged her and tied her up in the garage and as she was hanging there, bleeding out, 
Miss Castor welcomed her children Nina and Frazier home from school. She led them into the living room and locked the door. She then shut all of the curtains and blinds. She began to tell the children what, her, what their father had done. She then gave both children a vitamin, rat poison. She put them down for a nap, a nap. After they both drifted off, she took her husband's newest, fanciest belt. She fastened it to a rafter and slid a chair into the living room. She stepped up onto it and fastened it around her neck. As she leapt off the chair, her husband pulled into the driveway. The best part about her plan is that the only way he could get in was through the garage. Now, supposedly the story goes that he went mad. He pulled his car into the garage. He then moved all of the bodies into the car and sat in the car with the engine on and the garage sealed up and tried to commit suicide. The car ran out of gas just before he died. He ended up nearly brain dead and half starved before a neighbor noticed the smell. It was about four to six days till he was found nearly starved, and he had been breathing the air of decaying bodies. He was taken to the hospital. Before he had tried to kill himself, he had written a note, so had his wife. The notes were found during the investigation. His wife's read, Dear Harold, you married me. You took vows. You and I share two beautiful children. You lie to me on a daily basis. I love you, Joan. That says that in quotation marks. You say that the children and I are your happiness and joy. Well, now you've all lost all of your joy. Now I hope you hurt like I am at this moment. Goodbye, asshole. She left it on the coffee table near the chair. His note said, Dear reader, blame not my wife, my mistress, or my children for these deaths. They were brought on by my selfishness. My wife hung herself in pain I caused. My children were put out of their misery, out of her shame of me. And my mistress was killed for my sin. These four souls are on my shoulders. The reason I know all of this is because my grandmother was a nurse who cared for him. Her sister worked for the coroner who did the autopsies, and my grandfather was chief of police at the time. And one year at a family reunion, I must have looked bored shitless, because they called me over and started telling me. Anyway, back to ghost hunting. We heard that if you fiddled with the garage, you could get in. We tried, and inched our way under the space between, beneath the door. Once inside, we all got the chills and were freezing all of a sudden, which was odd due to it being a balmy 85 degree summer night. 85 degrees Fahrenheit. I know some people that watch my videos may live in the places where Celsius is used. I don't know how to convert that. So. We could smell exhaust, see blood stained on the floor. We all started coughing and wheezing. Then we noticed the smell of rotten decay, and we heard a car engine start. We all ran for the door that led into the house, shutting it behind us. We stopped coughing and wheezing, but my chest felt tight and heavy. My friend Tina heard children crying. I'm listening to something to hear my mom. And my friend Alan swears he felt something brush up against his shoulder. And we all felt sadness and nearly cried. We started shining our flashlights around, and we all pointed up at the rafter at the same time. We all felt chills as our lights landed on a belt that was still swinging. Then we heard a shrieking woman's voice say, WHY? We ran back out the way we came in. We shoved the garage door down and backed away out onto the street and ran home. We walked in and got an earful from my parents. You've been gone for hours. Where the hell were you? We all glanced up at the clock. It read 11.30 p.m. It hadn't felt like more than 10 or 15 minutes. We lied and said we were going, we were goofing off in the store, then stopped for sodas and took the long way home. My parents didn't seem to completely buy it. They made arrangements for Tina and Alan. They were picked up, and we all got grounded for a month. We vowed we'd never go there again, or tell anyone. I wrote this in a rush, because I was like, you know what, I feel like writing something scary. Um, I don't write a lot of scary things, and I know that sometimes when I do write, I seem to... And I got that from reading that, that I rush the stuff that's meant to be exciting, because this is why I write and I don't read. Um, I read scary stuff, if they're short, because I don't like waiting forever for something to happen in a story. I don't like that with movies, and I don't like that with books. So 
why I don't read a lot. It's not because I'm not a good reader. I am a really good reader. The reason I was making mistakes there is because autocorrect turned a couple words into other words and I was like <sighs> correcting it as I was reading it, but that's kind of hard to do sometimes. But yeah, I uh, I hate when I'm reading a book. Like I, every, They would give us library time. I don't know if they still do that in schools. But in elementary school, they would give us library time. And we would have to pick out a book. And we would do SSR. And the more books you completed, you got um, AAR or something. There was, there was points that you could get that earned you things. Um, and you got them through reading. And certain books had a couple points and some were only one point. But I never really read any or got any points. And it, and it kind of it's kind of weird because I like to write, but I don't like to read because a lot of books. And the Harry Potter books are included in this. They go on and on and on before anything interesting happens. And there's people that are like, oh, well, how do you know the little things aren't foreshadowing or the little things aren't, like, pertaining to the story in some way? I'm like, because there is no way that using 100 pages to describe someone's, you know, week in their life with basic things like going to the bathroom or going to the lake with their family or you know like if you go to, if, if in the story you go to the lake with your family your, the character and that's where the stuff takes place that I understand if in that portion of the story throughout those hundred pages you detail how at first it was okay but then a week later this happened and a week after that this happened and you you know, take the time out to write that it was the week of February this, or the week of March this. If you put details in, or if it's a book that's based on, like, an actual series of events, I can understand it being a little longer and more lengthy, but if you are writing fiction, and it's meant to be something scary or spooky, there is a point where you have to build up suspense, I understand. But, if you take too long... The whole time I'm reading, I'm guessing what's going to happen. And the more foreshadowing you do, the more I'm going to know what happens. And I don't want to read a book where I can guess the ending. I know that there are only like five different plots, and each plot can be accomplished in many different ways. But, um, yeah, one of my English teachers said that there are only like four or five or six basic plot lines that stories follow. And if you really look at books and movies and things like that, it's kind of true. There's usually love interest or it's scary or it's funny or somebody's life is affected or somebody's life stays the same. There's certain things that it follows and there's certain small changes in each one. But there are only a certain number of variables, I guess. So that's why I say... It looks kind of creepy. It doesn't look like it when I look back. But see that shape there? Where it goes and then comes out? Um, that is this thing that's on my dresser. It's right there. It's that stripey thing. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. But the light is shining over it. And I can see it in that. But I can't see it over here. But anyway, it's weird. But anyway, like I said, there's only a few variables when it comes to like writing a story. So whenever you're reading one, you can guess what the ending's going to be. You have variables in your head of, okay, it's going to be like this, or it's going to be like this, or it's going to be like this. So if you take too much time in the suspense and thriller, in any story really, but mainly suspense and thriller ones, because those are the ones that I would probably appreciate, or even comedies, um, if you take too much time, the whole time the reader, not just me, is trying to guess what happened. And if they get to the end of the book and they've guessed because you've spent every chapter wasting hundreds of pages foreshadowing and uh, hinting and uh, everything. You're not a good writer. You're predictable. And I'm sorry if that makes a lot of people mad. But how many people have read books and been like, oh, this is a really good book. And then they, you know, tell somebody to read it and that person reads it and they're like, oh, it's all right. And they don't say what's wrong with the book. Uh, they don't sit there and say, oh, there's something definitely wrong with it. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with it. But if you can guess what's going to happen, what's the point of reading it? Just like with a movie. Some movies you can kind of guess, and that's what horror movies and trailers are for. But even if I know that people are going to die in a horror movie, I would hope that the person that made the movie, if someone was going to get stabbed, 
they wouldn't make that person's entire life based up upon like blades and knives. If someone's house was going to burn down, I would hope that they wouldn't make that person have a memory in the back of their mind in the middle of the movie where they were a little kid playing with fire a lot and getting in trouble for it all the time by their parents. Like, don't make things so obvious. Now, I write more than I read also because I like being the creator of a story. I like being able to um, express myself as well. And I feel like I've made this video very, very long. And I didn't want to make it that long, but you know, a lot of my videos are like almost 30 minutes, so it's not really that big of a deal. But I think I've said what I need to say about it. <laughs> um, I hope you guys like the story. I hope my sort of tangent slash rant slash droning on, it, you know, after the story wasn't too much. I have to continue cleaning my room now, and I wish I could do like vlogs where like I showed you guys, you know, my day. But honestly, my day is boring. I don't do much. Um... If I work, I work part-time. If I do anything, I'm usually with... Okay, like, I have a dentist appointment, and my mother's gonna be with me, so I can't really film that. Like, I, I see these YouTubers who are my age, who have their camera out all the time, and their relatives don't seem annoyed. They don't seem weirded out. Um, but if I pulled out my iPod and started recording in the middle of a dentist office, my mother would tell me to knock it the fuck off. Um, not because she hates me or anything, but because... My mother doesn't like cameras, too. I'd be making a scene, because where I'm from, there's not a lot of people walking around doing that. Where I'm from, there are loud, outrageous people. But a lot of them don't have cameras in their hands. And a lot of them don't do those things and put it on YouTube. Even though if they did, they would make a lot of money. Even though if they made a lot of money, they'd probably spend it all on booze. So, you know, it's not really poignant. But... Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you guys were so pumped about the Super Bowl last night, just like I was. I'm sorry if you're a Patriots fan. Um, but your team did not need any more rings. That's my opinion on that. Um, because, you know, here's the thing about teams that win multiple Super Bowls in a row. The fans and the team themselves get cocky. I hope the Eagles never get that way. I don't care if... Years down the road, when I'm an old woman and I'm watching football, they have like 30 rings, and I don't care. I still don't want them to get cocky. I still don't want them to walk on the field and act like they're better than everyone else, because no one's better than anyone. They're all football players. They all wear similar equipment. They all wear the same, you know, things, pretty much, and they all do the same drills and stuff, and the plays are a little different, and here and there is a little different, but basically they do the same job, so, you know... It's only fair that they all treat each other like equals. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your viewership. I hope you have a wonderful day, and God bless. Just done unofficial by bitch out.